All right, guys, I wanted to talk to you about this product. We built this years ago, and honestly, the problem we were trying to solve from a standpoint of shipping, I don't know that it was ever really solvable to make this product something that would ship in a cost-effective manner. I think that you're probably better off building your own or buying from someone who builds cages locally because what we did is we basically half assembled it. We shipped it with uh, mini, hog nose, mini hog rings and a set of crimpers and it worked. It was still very expensive to ship. Basically we made two boxes that folded flat and you opened them up and put them together. More what I wanted to show you today is this would be an idea for how you could track your quail. We actually call this product the quail tracker. Um, I just don't think we had enough horsepower of, of manpower into it. The guy that made the cages was great. He's since passed away. Uh, but the, I run a podcast. I can't market a cage all day long. And the guy that we had as a partner to do that really just didn't do it. Um, we did do a successful Kickstarter with it. We did ship quite a few of them. People liked them. I think it could be better. And I want to go over like what we did, why we did it, and why I think it could be better. So if you look, we have two doors at the top. This definitely made it cost more to manufacture because you're dealing with additional materials and additional fabrication of hatches. But it was very necessary because if you have to remove quail, what do you think happens when you open this one and you stick your hand in there? They all run over there. So we also, these were not designed like a typical stack quail cage to cause eggs to roll downhill. They actually dropped the eggs onto the ground, ground and it just stayed where it was. And I'll tell you why I think another mod would be a good idea later. But what that meant is you had to go in there and get your eggs every day. And even if you were moving your birds, you still had to get your eggs every day. Now, if you had to get eggs over here from over there, you can see where that would be a problem. We also did a door here on the side. And we did that so that you could actually, if you wanted to, take something like a... Uh, a mesh tunnel and tractor them outside of it. If you do that, and it's one of those collapsible tunnels, it actually works pretty well because you can just kind of take the tunnel and like accordion it back in at the end of the day and get them back into your cage, but it's an extra step. My opinion is these things are light because there's no wood in them. They're all, this is like a, a rubber coated, vinyl coated galvanized material. And I would definitely recommend using it for an outdoor product. Um, but if you look at this, even though this cage is about I think it's two by three feet is what they are roughly. I can pick that up with one hand, my left hand, I can move that. My grandson can move this. I don't think it would be that hard to move it. If it was two of them in width and one of them in length, and that would be a much bigger footprint for your birds outside. So that's one thing I would change. Another thing we did, we created this place here for a feeder. And what we did is we cut holes so that they could stick their heads through and that they could eat out of that feeder. but. The truth is it always made it very hard for them to get to the bottom of the feeder. So a lot of the feed could never be reached. We did that to not take up floor space with the feeder and not have them make a mess. I think I would just go with standard galvanized chick feeders inside it. That's what I ended up doing when I experimented with this. It actually worked better for me. The other thing we did is we took like a big piece of four inch PVC pipe, like a tower. We put that adapted down to like a piece of half inch that ran along the bottom. And the little drinker cups, we put those drinker cups into automate watering. That I think I would definitely still do. The big modification though, not only would I make this bigger, I would change the way we did the bottom. So if you look at these bottoms, I think these are one inch. So this would be four square inches. A full grown quail's not getting out of there and it's on the bottom anyway. I would cut that out and I would have one, uh, these, these squares that large, my hand for comparison, all the way around. There's a couple things here. One, they're gonna get a lot better access to the ground. They're still protected from predators and from their own stupidity of getting out. There's a bigger thing though. Very few quail eggs are so large as to not fit through that hole. So when you went to move your cage, all you would do is lift your cage, move your cage to the next pace, place and pick up the eggs. You don't have to go inside the cage to get to the eggs. That means your birds are gonna be less stressed out. It's easier for you and the things that are easiest, we do the most. Now, does that mean that some animal could tip that over and get those eggs? Yeah, I mean, you have to you have to think about what's going to work for you based on your environment. But I would see this as best for, like, urban environments. The reason I don't do quail anymore is Dorothy doesn't eat them. It's a lot of work to do something that only one person in a household eats. If I can get her to give them another shot, maybe we'll bring them back. But I have an aviary back there. Now, it needs some work, and I have to decide if I want to put that work into it or decommission it. But I have an aviary and have enough space 
So it would probably make sense to me that even if I decide that aviary is not worth salvaging, to take the parts from it and rebuild it in a different manner and run quail in an aviary model. There was a lot of problems with the way I did that in there because of the garden beds and they went behind them. But what I also want to say today when I talk about this, some people said that's too high, they'll break their necks. There is a massive amount of 100% bullshit about quail. They have to be kept in a cage. If the cage is higher than 11 inches, they'll fly and break their necks. It's all BS. We kept them in here. We never lost a bird. I had a big chicken tractor that I kept them in. I never lost a bird due to some bird breaking its neck. We had them in there. They used to fly back and forth in there. They loved it in there. The only time I lost one in there, they landed in water. They couldn't get out of it. It had nothing to do with breaking their neck. However, there was another problem that came up in that aviary. They cleaned out all the greenery until there was just a nightshade, a wild nightshade that was left growing. They started eating it and they started committing suicide because it's a neurotoxin. It was screwing them up in the head. Once I figured out what it was, pulled it all out, no more problems. So you do have to be careful if you're tractoring them, doing an aviary or whatever. If they run out of green stuff, they'll start eating the green stuff they shouldn't eat. Now, they never ate it until they wiped everything else out. But if you want a tractor quail, I would start with this design and I would make it as big as is practical for you to still move it easily. And again, I would leave larger gaps because the other thing that happens, if you have gaps like this in a stack system, they're actually too big and they fall through and they're not comfortable. So you need smaller gaps. But it's still all the poop falls through really well in a stack system because they're not up against the ground. You have a pan down here to catch. With this on the ground, these ended up with a lot of poo it stuck to it and what you'd have to do is all you to do is hose it with a, a garden hose because it's this vinyl coated stuff it never had a problem uh but of course the birds didn't like it you had to, it was in an extra step and were you close to a hose or not close to a hose on that day whereas i think if you if you go to a much larger opening in the bottom you're gonna have less of that and again quail have more access to the ground so those are my thoughts if you want a tractor this would be a good place to start and again, I would make it wider, probably not longer. Longer is going to be probably more difficult to move. But the beauty is you can make it any size you want. And again, all we're using is a little mini hog ring pliers and hog rings. I'll see if they have those on Amazon. And if so, I'll put a link to them in the show notes for today. Take care, guys, and uh, hope that helps you out.